how much UGC do you sort of tap into? And, uh, and, and I know a lot of it occurs naturally. People just snap a photo of their Cinnabon because they can't believe how big and beautiful and shiny and delicious it looks, the same way that people take photos of their Starbucks cups, et cetera. Uh, how much are you egging that on or, or making UGC sort of part and parcel of your routine storytelling? As, as much as we can use it, we, we do. Um, we are, as, as much as you would think that UGC is everywhere for us, we have some pretty high standards of what we want to showcase to fans or, you know, people who've never visited us or just stumble across a feed that just blows up and you're seeing it in your discovery, you know, tab on your Instagram. Um, a cinnamon, a cinnamon roll can go from absolutely delicious, craveable, oh my God, I want that, to what is that on that plate? Um, so we have pretty high standards as to what roles and what the product looks like that we share out. Um, we also go through these lovely things called brand repositioning where you launch a new logo. And so we also are limited to uh, what logos we want to keep out there in the world. So we try to any, any, you know, bakery that hasn't necessarily transitioned over their signage or some of the old packaging that has old logos on there. We just choose to not utilize and showcase that material. So um, I will say on the flip side, we are very fortunate in that we are an international business. So we get some amazing photos from some of our international fans that feature products that we don't have domestically that allow us to tell that global story and really showcase our, um, our the Cinnabon around the world. I also noticed that, that you're doing these new, uh, I think relatively new, uh, hashtag sweet talk Twitter chats, uh, sort of this idea of life needs frosting. Can you talk a little bit about that, about that strategy and, and how it plays out? Yeah, so I mean, we, we've definitely been been doing them for a little while, and it's it's our weekly way to create a community and to be a part of them in a way that has nothing to do with with our product and with our, our bakeries. We use social listening, and we use a lot of the platforms, um, the analytics platforms, to see what what does our audience care about, what topics, what um, areas of life, what, what, what are they, what do they care about? What do they want to hear? And we craft a weekly one hour Twitter chat that gets our fans involved to talking about the things that they love. Uh, we will subtly weave in a product mention, you know, for example, today we were talking about summer getaways. And so uh, while the entire conversation has nothing to do with our product, we sent out one tweet within the, one broadcast tweet in the middle of that that talks about if you're on a summer road trip, we just launched a brand new cookie frosting sandwich um, with Pilot Flying J, which is a you know a, a travel and entertainment spot that people stop at on their road trip. So very natural, it fits in with the conversations. Um, but yeah, it's just it's our chance to connect with our fans and our audience and have them tell us a little bit more about their life, and it gives us insight into you know what they want, what they like, and potentially even it gives us just more insights on how we craft our brand moving forward. My question for you is, is, is this a little bit about timing and the maturity of these social platforms? If we were sitting here, you know, recording this in July of 2020, do yeah. you think that you would feel a little bit differently? I mean, as Instagram perhaps becomes more of an engagement channel and, and other things happen, are you going to start to lead that way? Or is this, this is pretty firm in terms of the Twitter and the Instagram and how you're leveraging both platforms? Yeah, I think, I think they're all They are, are going to continue to have their place. I don't, I don't see them necessarily going anywhere. I think the weight might shift. Um, you know, when I, when we first came into social media and I was working, you know, on the brand side um, and launching pages, you know, I would have never thought that, you know, Twitter would have, have gone in the direction that it has. I would never have thought that Instagram would have blown up the way that it has. Um, and so I think as the platforms start to evolve and have more layers within them, you know, you have um, IGTV, you have, you know, stories that have just become so incredibly popular, popular on the Instagram channel. Um, it's, I could easily see it start to shift and go in a different direction. Um, I, if we're able to find that perfect melding of the crave and engagement, I mean, that is like a win-win a for us for sure. So I welcome either platform to step up to the challenge and make it a little bit easier for us. My last question for you is, how, how are you showing sales attribution? Are you getting accurate data from the locations so that you can begin to show that correlation or causation from, okay, we ran this, this social campaign, and then we saw uh, an uptick in, in this particular part of the country. Yeah, so that is one part that we are definitely working through right now. Obviously, being in a mall, we come into some issues with being able to directly attribute it to 
going right to our bakery. Uh, when you get into uh, you know, multiple stories of a building, it's very hard to make sure that that traffic went straight into our bakery after seeing a digital banner ad with an app that they're frequently using. So um, we are doing the best we can and uh, hoping that you know, with new platforms and as everything evolves, that it becomes more precise. So we're getting our data from that. Um, at the end of last year, we also ventured into having an official catering platform. And so through online ordering, we're able to track uh, our catering orders through those social ads. Um, and then, uh, you know, it, other than that, it's, it's really just more of a awareness or it's uh, a couple layers higher in the funnel that we're hopefully getting um, a better sense of whether or not people are taking action on uh, on purchasing a product after they see our our social ads.